Okay, time for another unboxing video. Uh, as you recall, I did the uh, Dune Imperium Deluxe upgrade set the last time, and uh, today, fresh out of the shipping box, I received my copy of Dune Imperium Rise of Ix expansion. So let's get into this one and see what all is in here. Um, I have sleeved the cards already uh, in the interest of time, and because I also want to show in the end how this combines into the uh, the main box, um, but uh, anyway, so they are sleeved. But that's all I've done is they don't they don't come pre-sleeved. So anyway, taking the lid off. Uh, you get the rule book, which is nice, and it's got really good artwork as always, which you know definitely from the movie, the uh, the Denis Villeneuve uh, version of Dune. Uh, looks tremendous. Uh, a lot of cool new rules in here. Um, obviously, I'm just now opening this, so I have not read the rule book yet, but I know. Uh, there are some major changes to the game, which I'll get into as I get into the other uh, components here. So first off, as I said, there are the new cards. Let me get them out of here. There we are. And there is a promo card that comes with it when you order this from directly from Direwolf. It's this Boundless Expansion. I'm sorry, Boundless Boundless Ambition card. And. Uh, it's a pretty cool um, signet ring effect, and some cool artwork there of the uh, of the Baron. Can't get enough of the Baron, so that's pretty cool. So that's that's the promo card for this one. Uh, well, I'll just go through the other cards real quick. Uh, this set inc includes Jameis. Finally, Jameis was a friend. Uh, we've got Bounty Hunter. I'll just show these for a second. If you want to take a look at them longer, just pause the video and see. Water Peddler. Home Delegate, Freighter Fleet, Freighter Fleet, another Bene Gesserit card, In the Shadows, same thing, Court Intrigue, An X Guild Compact, that icon there is the new uh, Dreadnought uh, uh, game piece that's included. Desert Ambush, obviously a Fremen card. Local Fence. Imperial Shock Troopers, that's a cool picture. Nice uh, Sardaukar with a laser gun there, very nice. Sayadina, Fremen and Bene Gesserit, very nice. Weirding Way, good, good picture there of Jessica and uh, Stilgar. The Truthsayer, I believe there's another one of those. Truthsayer, yep. Emperor and Bene Gesserit. Negotiated withdrawal. Let me move my thumb out of the way on that one so you can see it. Another one of the negotiated withdrawals. Spice Trader. Imperial Bashar. Guild Chief Administrator. Web of Power. That's a cool looking card. The artwork in this game is just beautiful. It just it goes really well with the movie. Um, it's just it's just tremendous artwork. Appropriate. Embedded agent. Esmar Tuik gets rep representation in the game. Satellite ban. The Ixian engineer. Another Ixian engineer. Treachery, because what would Dune be without treachery? Treachery again. A Guild Accord. That's pretty cool. Uh, Shai Hulud finally gets a card. Very nice. Oh, look at the Fremen Bond on that one. That's, that's a nasty combat card. It's expensive too, though. As it should be. Uh, full Scale Assault. More uh, Sardaukar there. And these cards here, I did peek at the back of the rulebook, so I wanted to see what these were for. Uh, there is a new game mode, an epic game mode, which kind of extends the length of the game to 12 victory points, and uh, um, you know makes it a little bit more kind of hit the ground running. You have five troops in your uh, garrison to begin with instead of um, three barracks. I mean, I'm sorry. And uh, this replaces the um, 
Dune Desert Planet card uh, of the starter set of cards you get. So gives you a little bit more valuable card to start with, a little more functional card if you're playing the epic game uh, than the uh, Dune Desert Planet card, um, which is good. Um, and also the artwork again, it's really nice. It's from that uh, opening scene um, with the Fremen attack on the uh, Harkonnen spice mining. So let me get these cards out of the way here. Move them over here. And then we get new bits here. These are the dreadnoughts, uh, two per color. Um, just gonna show them real quick. So they are little meeple guys um, that basically just represent the ships, the dreadnoughts in the game. They're kind of little, yeah, just basic little rocket ship looking things. Um, I'm a little bummed that there was not something for this in the deluxe set to kind of upgrade those. So with all those other nice bits of plastic I have in the deluxe upgrade, I'm still having to use some uh, wooden meeples here, but yeah, it's a small price to pay. It's cool. Um, there are more. Here they are. More House of Gaul cards. Um, I sleeve these in clear. Uh, these were all sleeved in the uh, the Dune sleeves that I got from Direwolf. Um, but I clear I clear sleeve these because I don't I don't like I said in my other video I don't really use the Hogal um, deck. I use the app. But um, for those who do, I'll just run through this real quick so you can see the additional cards. Uh, Interstellar shipping. Fold space. Smuggling or interstellar shipping. Dreadnought. So these are just basically the new spaces that are on the uh, X board or the Chome board that's uh, replacing a section of the main board. Dreadnought. Dreadnought. Tech negotiation and tech negotiation. So put those out of the way here. Uh, we do have some new houses, uh, leaders to. Uh, add to the game, which is always nice. A little more variety to that. Uh, we have Prince Rumbar Vernius. Release gun cannons and his dreadnoughts have strength of four instead of three. So he's really good with the uh, dreadnoughts. He's a dreadnought heavy character. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then Tessia Vernius. A lot of text on her card. I'll leave that one there for a second. Uh, we've got Archduke Edmund, I, I'm sorry, Armand Ekaz. Ekaz. Uh, we have Alessa Ekaz. Alisa. Uh, Viscount Hundro Moritani, very cool. Princess, quote unquote, Yuna Moritani. And then we've got updated um, round cards here to kind of uh, explain the game out again. And I don't know if this adds to a six player game or not. Um, that's a really good question. Let me see here. Let me move this out of the way for a second. Uh, no. No, it's still a four player game. So that's what I figured. Oh, I guess it has to be a four-player game because there's only four colors of uh, miniatures in it, so yeah, of course. Uh, we have new Intrigue cards and new uh, Conflict cards. I'll just run them really quickly, too. Uh, let's see, Skirmish, Skirmish. These are, con these are all Conflict uh, ones. Conflict 3, uh, Economic Supremacy, that's a heavy one. And then all the uh, Intrigue cards here. We've got Quid Pro Quo, Strong Arm, Strategic Push, Combat Card, Cannon Turrets, Combat Card, Oh, an optional one, advanced weaponry or that. Very nice. Plot or combat card. That was nice. Secret forces. If you have a seat on the high council, you get two troops. That's nice. Oh, excellent. A way to call some more stuff out of your deck. Very nice. Uh, finesse. Plot or combat again. Uh, 
diversion, an Ixian probe, machine culture, expedite, glimpse the path, grand conspiracy. Oh, these are end game cards. That's a new thing. Okay. Oh, that, oh never mind. That's when, you, when the game ends, you play this. Duh. That's kind of cool. War chest, either end game or combat. That's handy. Obviously, that one is for the uh, the epic game uh, because that's if you have ten victory points or more. Oh no, no, not ten victory points. That's ten money. That's ten uh, salari. So yeah, that still counts. Uh, second wave and blackmail. Very cool. So those combat cards were uh, two ones. A two and a three. In case I didn't make that clear on that. And they give you some zip blocks here to put your stuff in. Uh, some more scoring track tokens. Now here's kind of the meat of it here. And these new board sections. This replaces the top section of the board. The Landsrad Council. Well, the top two thirds of the board. Um, so that's kind of cool. And that gives you some new options there. Instead of the spice mining and selling spice, it's uh, a few more options. And for the most part, it makes sense as to what they are. But um, obviously, these are some new symbols here. So I'll put that on the board here in a bit so we can see it. Uh, this is, I believe this is a sideboard, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, this is a sideboard that goes off to the side on the top right. So it just. If you're looking at the board, this will just kind of fit right over here. Uh, if this is the, if this board is the top of the board, this will just kind of fit right here. And again, I'll set it all up here in a bit and show it. And then we have these to punch out, and these are the uh, Ixian Technology cards. So let's kind of leave this here so you can see them. Uh, these are upgrades you can get throughout the game uh, that can kind of give you an advantage over certain aspects of it. Um, you know, whenever you win a com conflict, you get water if you have wind traps or, you know, that kind of thing. And there's a second one. So there's 18 of these. And as a fan of the uh, the old Avalon Hill game, I am happy to see Chalmerky in a, in a Dune game again. That makes me happy. All right, and that is it. The rest of the box is another Ziploc. So I'm going to take the other uh, game set here, and I'm going to open it up and see how this all fits. Well, first I'll set up the board, and then I'll see how the rest of this all fits. So let's move this over here. Get this right here. Put the camera down for a second. Whoa. First off, the board. Let me move this out of the way. The board here is like this originally. And then with this new board section here, I'll have to move this out of the way. So, there's my board. So, this actually is just an overlay. So this replaces the entire Landsred Council section of the board. So where it was this, it's now this. So the High Council didn't change. The Mentat didn't change. Instead of Rally Troops, uh, well, they got rid of Rally Troops and the Hall of Oratory because no one really used Hall of Oratory anyway. Um, at least I never really used it. Um, so now we have Swordmaster and Hall of Oratory gone. I'm sorry, Rally Troops and Hall of Oratory gone, and Swordmaster moves into the Rally Troops space. And then the Cell Melange and Secure Contract spaces that were here are now replaced with this, which again, this is the Chome board. I'm 
not 100% sure what all this is because I haven't read the rules yet. So I'll get into that later, but um, that goes there. And then this actual X board, according to the picture saw the rule book, goes like that. So this would be the new board layout like this. So that's pretty cool. And it fits all very nicely. All right, so let's see how it all fits back in the box. So let's take these over here. Fold this back up. Okay. All right, and we'll take this out first because I have to get down to the cards. So, first off. so there's my little replacement water and spice tokens there. Uh, for the time being, in the interest of getting through this video, I'm just going to put those in there for now, but we'll get them out later. Uh, the starter cards don't change, so I don't have to put anything in there. The house cards here, we get new ones of those, but the well is obviously deep enough that these will fit, so I'm just, ooh, ooh. Just lift that up there. And put everybody right back in there the way they were. And that's perfect. Alright, and then let's go over here, put that back there. And then we'll get the cards out here, and this shouldn't be a problem at all. He said as he tried to open it one-handed. Okay, so the new intrigue cards here. Let's see, new intrigue cards. We'll spin them out. All right, the intrigue cards will go right here in its own little slot. Putting it nicely there. And the conflict cards will just go here with the other conflict cards. There we go. And then our Hagal cards here fit right in with the other Hagal cards that I have right here. And then my new actual deck cards are going to have to spill over into the Hagal section because I can tell right now it's a little heavy. Oh, it's a little thick to fit in there, so let me put the camera down again. ones in here with these guys and then these will have to be shuffled in anyway. I'll see how many I can fit in. I don't know, they're fitting pretty good. Actually they do all fit just barely, even sleeved. So other than the three uh, or four cards I need to keep out anyway, which are the ones for the epic starter set. Um, everything does fit very snugly. It fits. <clears throat> so that's good. So I'll pop that lid back on there. Put him back where he came from. And then I should have possibly <clears throat> room for these punch outs but that's okay <coughs> excuse me I believe if I'm looking at this right it looks like this might be sized to fit oh it is look at that look at that that's perfect they knew so that fits there I bet this fits right here yep and that fits on top of it perfectly and then this fits on top of all that perfectly. You gotta love it. So, yeah, this, this set was designed with this expansion in mind. So, which makes those meeples that they include with this a little surprising again. But anyway, so everything fits beautifully there. Um, I have not punched these out yet, so I'm just gonna put them on top. Put my 
rule book back. rule book here, get my X rule book here. And just like that, it's all contained back in the big deluxe edition box beautifully. So uh, that is it. That's the unboxing of the Rise of X, which has now been unboxed and included and combined into this. So this will go into my storage area. But that's it. So anyway, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, like, subscribe, share, etc. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask me in the comments. Thank you. Have a good day.